So I might have to give this particular film a few more watches, because I will admit that on the first watch, I thought it was good, but it's almost like there's just too much that is going on that you could fully take it all in on one watch. So His Girl Friday has a lot of fast dialogue, quick, quirky humor, and excellent acting that I don't think you can really fully take it all in and appreciate this film in just one watch. So. I've got this bookmark for some more viewings, but in any case, I wanted to give this kind of a review and go through kind of the basics of what His Girl Friday was all about. The plot is simple enough. Uh, Cary Grant is the star. He plays this scheming, fast-talking newspaper editor, and uh, Rosalind Russell plays his equally fast-talking ace reporter ex-wife. So if you understand those two things, that's kind of the core of what this film is all about. Now, as far as uh, Rosalind Russell's character, I'll say this for a 1940s film, her character was surprisingly sharp and progressive. I mean, she was a very clever, witty character, and she stood her own against other characters in the film. She wasn't pushed around, and she remained strong-willed and headstrong through the film. She's very convincing. And I'll say this, you know, film writers of today, when writing for female characters, could really learn a lot by studying Rosalind Russell's character and her performance from this film as playing a very believable yet larger-than-life ace reporter. And she's probably one of the best female characters I've seen in a film in a long time. And it's interesting too, she reminded me a lot of kind of the quirky Lois Lane character from Superman as a very smart, competent reporter driven to get the story. And you know, even thinking about it, Cary Grant has a Clark Kentishness to him as well. And Superman fans might be able to see some of the future influences, both in the old serial, The Adventures of Superman, with George Reeve and Noel Neal, or even in the 1978 Superman, the definitive Superman film, by the way, with Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder. So you can see the influences there. And uh, as far as the comedy of this film, you know, it's vastly unlike what passes as quote unquote comedy in cinema today. You know, we're talking about a film, it's black and white from the 1940s. And instead of like the comedy of today, which is namely crass profanity and adult dialogue and filth, the humor of this film was built on quick wit, the comedic character interactions, the scheming that's going on, with just a little bit of physical humor. In that regard, this was a refreshing change compared to the toilet humor of Hollywood today. And this is another instance of, you know, where filmmakers of today could really benefit from looking back to the past to some of these smart, entertaining movies of yester, yesteryear, instead of just circling the gutters with what passes for cinema today. So much of the film also seems to be around characters who are quickly screaming into their phones. And of course, I mean old-fashioned landlines, not cell phones, of course. So it's a little amusing to see them grab these antique phones to just start yelling into them. And I will admit, it's a little hard to keep up with it all sometimes. That was kind of my initial comment, is it's a great film, but there's so much going on. You just can't really process it all. And I think it almost merits re-watching just so you can pick up all the quick dialogue that's going on as they're screaming into the phones back and forth. And you do have to get ready. That is a big part of this film is intense phone yelling <laughs> and smoking. There's copious amounts of smoking that make up a big part of the film. I can't even imagine how they were able to film this without clouds of smoke obscuring the set and fogging the lenses of the cameras. But it's you know, that's the era, you know, we're talking a 1940s movie, so everybody smoked back then, I guess, because back then, I guess it was good for you or something. So uh, a little more about the characters, talked about Cary Grant, Rosalind Russell, those are the two stars. There's another guy who is Bruce, he's sort of the bumbling fiance uh, to the uh, Hildy character, who's Rosalind Russell. And Bruce doesn't really seem to serve much of a purpose other than to be this naive, bumbling patsy to Cary Grant's mistreatment of him, including at one point being jailed falsely for a counterfeit money scheme. And you know, I get the gag, and I ended up actually feeling sorry for the guy <laughs> after a while. And you know, going into this film, 
that this Bruce guy, he's not going to last. And it's just kind of funny to see what happens, but you do end up feeling a little bit sorry for him. Uh, there is a plot that's going on about a, a character. I think his name was Earl Williams. He's this mousy little guy falsely accused of murder. And the story's around him and the reporters trying to get the story. There's a plot with the prison break. And Cary Grant and Rosalind Russell end up hiding this escaped criminal. There's a lot more screaming into phones. They try to keep him hidden from other people from the press and from law enforcement. There's a lot of smoking and yelling. But everything works out in the end. So I'll leave the plot summary at that point. This is definitely one to check out. And I myself am going to have to give this another watch or two to try to make sense of it all. But it was a very entertaining film. Now, my three YouTube subscribers might be wondering, hey, Rob, why haven't you filmed yourself live doing these reviews lately? Well, the honest answer is I managed to leave the charger for the camera battery at my relative's house way over on the coast. And they're several hours away. And because as of the recording, mid-April, we've got the COVID pandemic and this never-ending quarantine, I'm not going to be able to be heading out to pick it up anytime soon. So since my Android phone does a passable job with audio, I'm just using that for now to do some of these reviews. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy, and then I can just put it up with some stills from the film. So that's the story. Hopefully I'll be back to doing live soon if I can ever get my charger back. In any case, uh, His Girl Friday is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. But my understanding is that the film is also in the public domain, so it might actually be out there somewhere else for free as well. So just do a little research, you can probably find it. It's a good film, it's worth checking out.